This new BMW M2 has grown in size, it's gained a lot of weight, and a lot of people would say that it's not very good looking anymore. So has this new car lost that fun to drive factor that the old M2 had? Let's go for a drive and find out. first things that you'll notice about the new BMW M2, as you can probably tell by my voice going up and down as I drive over bumps, is just how stiff the ride is. Now this new car does have adaptive dampers and you can change the softness from Comfort, Sport or Sport Plus, but in all honesty, they all feel pretty much the same. On city streets, every time they go over a bump, you really feel that bump. Now on the plus side, the suspension does a really good job of making sure that the tires are in constant contact with the pavement. The clip that I showed you at the start of this performance section of the video was done in second gear and the car was on a very, very bumpy bit of road. And yet, full throttle, second gear, and the back tires never lost traction. So this new M2 has a lot of grip. Of course, it also helps to have very sticky summer tires, which this car does have. The second thing that you'll notice when you start driving the BMW M2 is just how fast the steering is. I think that's becoming a norm now on all BMW M cars because the last M car that I drove, which was the M4, that one also had very, very quick steering. Now, of course, this car is heavier than the previous generation M2, and yet it still feels agile because of this quick steering. The front end feels planted and it just goes anywhere that you point the steering wheel at. Every little tiny, tiny adjustment that you make in the steering, the front end immediately reacts. At times on city streets, this quick steering can make the car feel twitchy, especially when the roads are a little bit wet like how they are right now. But on a racetrack, I'm sure that this fast steering coupled with the new suspension and dampers is a big benefit to this car. Speaking of the track, this M2 receives the brilliant traction control system that is fitted to the M3 and M4. You can set it so that it does not allow for any sort of wheel slip in any condition, or you can turn it completely off. The impressive part is what happens when you adjust its 10 different settings between fully on and fully off. With traction control somewhere in the middle, it will flatter you and allow the car to drift even if you don't have the drifting skills of Keiichi Tsuchiya. I hope I'm not butchering that name. This car also receives the same drift analyzer of the M3 and M4 to score your drifts. And finally, the third thing that you'll notice as soon as you start driving this car on city streets is just how powerful this engine is. It is the S58, so exactly the same engine as in the M3 and M4 but it is detuned just a tiny bit. So in this M2, it produces 453 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. That is about 20 horsepower less than the M3 and M4, the standard versions, not the competition versions, but torque is the same. Torque picks up somewhere around the 2000 mark, but then it really, really picks up as you go in the mid-range. And that's where this car really likes to be in. It likes to be more so in the mid-range RPMs when you're hooning it around a twisty road. My only small complaint about this engine when it's in this car is that it's not really that loud. There is a little button down here on the center console with an exhaust icon on it, which does make the car a little bit louder, but it just still feels very muffled. Obviously, this is an easy fix. Just get a new muffler. 
I'm sure that there's plenty of aftermarket support or there will be plenty of aftermarket support for this car and I'm sure that BMW themselves will also offer a muffler accessory for this car to you know give you the proper sound that this car deserves. Paired with this engine is a six-speed manual transmission which is what I have here or you can get it with an eight-speed automatic. It's no longer a dual clutch but I have driven the eight-speed in the BMW M4 and I can tell you that it is a really good transmission. Shifts really smoothly but also very very quickly when it's in its most sportiest setting. As for this six-speed manual it's okay but it's not really one that I like all that much, especially when you compare it against other six-speed manuals in other sports cars, namely the Toyota Supra. The shifter in this one just feels a little bit too rubbery and the clutch is a little too light and you don't really get that crisp bite point like how you do in the Toyota Supra. But I'm not complaining too much because this is a brand new car and it is being offered with a six-speed manual. Hashtag save the manuals. With the equipped six-speed manual transmission, the 2023 BMW M2 is rated for 14.3 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 10 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. I managed to average 13.6 liters per 100 kilometers during my time with the car. Interestingly, the eight-speed automatic has slightly worse fuel economy than the manual. It is rated for 14.6 and 10.3 liters per 100 kilometers respectively. When it comes to stopping this car, the brakes on this M2 are ferocious, which is a good thing if a Subaru driver decides to pull out right in front of you. There are 15 inch rotors in the front and 14.6 inch rotors in the back. The brake pedal is firm with a strong initial bite, especially in sport mode. In comfort mode, the brakes don't grab as aggressively, which can provide a smoother stop in city traffic. Now, as I said at the very start of this review, the M2 has a really stiff ride. You feel every little small bump that's on the road or change in road surface. You just feel all of it. To me, the ride is a little bit too stiff. Doesn't matter whether the suspension is in Comfort or Sport Plus. It's just still, it's too stiff for daily commuting. This is one car that I would not want to take on a long road trip or even commute daily from home to work. Additionally, this car does like to follow the crown of the road, so I'm having to give the steering a lot of minute inputs just to keep the car in a straight line. And this is not when I'm full throttle accelerating, this is just regular cruising down a road. It's always a little bit of correction here and there just to stay in a straight line. And on top of all that, on highways, the tires are really, really loud. They drown out every other noise in this cabin, including the engine, and you have to turn up the radio quite a bit in order to hear it. So I get the impression that this car feels more at home on a racetrack rather than city streets. Now let's look at the interior of the new BMW M2, and the first thing that we have to talk about are these carbon bucket seats. So they were primarily designed to keep you in them when the car is going really quickly around corners and they do a great job of doing that. They have massive bolsters for your thighs and also adjustable bolsters for your waist. Now the amount of comfort that you have in them really depends on your body type. So for my six foot four height and somewhat slim build, I do have a bit of a gut, I feel just fine in them. The thigh bolsters are digging a little bit into my thighs, but I'm perfectly fine with them. It would be nice if there was a bit more padding in these seats. However, for short road trips, they are just fine. Not that I want to take a long road trip in this car because of the stiff suspension. But the worst part about these seats is trying to get in and out of them. You pretty much have to hop in and hop out of them because otherwise you're going to be hitting this really big thigh bolster where, well, let's just say the sun don't shine down there. Anyway, the rest of the interior is typical modern day BMW. So you have two screens, one for your infotainment system and one for the driver display. 
And of course, the climate controls are buried in the infotainment system, which I really hate. I much prefer the previous generation where you had individual buttons for the climate. You do get a physical volume knob, but that's about it. This is the latest BMW infotainment system, which you can control by the touchscreen or the rotary knob on the center console. And it does allow for wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Steering wheel is nice and chunky, so it fits my somewhat big hands just fine. You get an M1 and M2 buttons right at the top as it's normal for BMW M cars these days. And you can completely customize the M1 and the M2 however you want in the infotainment system. As for interior space, as I mentioned earlier, I am above average in height, but I have plenty of legroom and plenty of headroom. I feel like I do have quite a bit of headroom even if I were to wear a helmet for track days and this seat is in its lowest position but you can raise it up to get a slightly better view out the front. Speaking of which, the view is perfectly fine out the front, out the side, through the mirrors and even in the blind zones. The back seats are not as commodious as the fronts as is to be expected. With this car having less headroom and legroom than the outgoing M2, the back seats hardly have any space for adults. There are also only two seats, not three, with a little tray in between them. The trunk capacity remains the same at 390 liters, and the back seats can be folded 40-20-40. But you may have to move the front seats forward in order for the back rest to fold down. Like many things in life, the 2023 BMW M2 has become more expensive than before. It starts at $76,500 Canadian, and with all of the options that this demo car came equipped with, the price easily balloons up to $96,500 Canadian as equipped. For the money, it at least has all the features that one would expect from a BMW vehicle. The carbon bucket seats are heated, as is the steering wheel, there's a head-up display, a wireless phone charging pad in the center console, built-in navigation along with wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, dual-zone automatic climate control, a backup camera with parking sensors, and BMW's parking assistant. You can also option the car with a sunroof instead of the carbon fiber roof. Additionally, you can also add adaptive cruise control, but only when the car is optioned with the automatic transmission. So if I had the money to buy a BMW M2, would I do it? To be honest, I probably would not. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a really, really fast car. In fact, there's no way that I can reach this car's full potential out on the back roads of Vancouver. Technically, I should not even be doing that on public roads. I would need a racetrack. And it feels like this car was designed first and foremost to be quick on a racetrack. So if you are the type of person that likes to go on racetracks every single weekend, then this is definitely the car for you. However, for somebody like myself who drives mostly on city streets and from time to time likes to have fun on backcountry roads or on a racetrack once or twice a year during the summer, then the M4 is a better bet because that one does have the comfort for city streets but also is a lot of fun when you're pushing it on a twisty road. But like I said, this one is mostly for track. And it's not like the M4 is that much more expensive than this one. This one's $100,000 as equipped, thereabouts. But the M4, you can have it for another $15,000 and have all of the same features that this one has, including carbon roof, carbon bucket seats, head-up display, big wheels, you name it. Just another $15,000. Plus, the M4 is available with all-wheel drive now, so you can use that car year-round, no problem. But this one, I just didn't really fall in love with it like how I did with the M4. But that's just my opinion. What's yours? Would you take this or the M4? Or maybe something else? Let me know in the comments. And if you would like to know more about this BMW M2, I have a written review with a few more details about it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up here. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely, it'll be an SUV next time. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.